Hey YouTube friends and family. How's everybody doing? Well, I hope you're doing great. Today's Monday, the 15th of July. And I just wanted to get on here and share some thoughts. I was out working in the garden and pulling up the weeds and I've been attacked by morning glory. Oh my goodness. And I love those little flowers. They're just as pretty as they can be, but what a vicious vine. It just wants to strangle everything in its way. So I had to pull them up and hate pulling up plants of any kind. I think all of them have a purpose. Didn't need it in my garden though. Anyway, last night I spent a lot of time on YouTube and I came to realize that we are collectively, I mean everybody it seems, is focused on the negativity, the bad things, the catastrophic events, the uh, disasters, the pain of others the crimes, the uh, the bad. Out of many, many videos that I went through and I was clicking on videos for people that I've never even never even listened to or, or have never heard of. And I noted that so many of them with the exclusion of uh, educational you know, the videos by some of the greatest cooks ever. You know, cooking videos and recipe sharing and gardening tips and things like that. The majority of the videos are people sharing doom and gloom and all the horrible news events. And it just seems to me that we're being overwatered, over fertilized. And though we need water and we need fertilizer, when you get too much of it, it is destructive. It is not good. And that's what I see happening. And it's heart wrenching. How can we keep our spirit up? How can we keep our faith? And in knowing that inside faith is our hope. If we don't have faith, how can we have hope? So when we dwell or focus on nothing but negativity, it's like overwatering us, over fertilizing, and our spirit starts becoming depleted. Now, the reason I say this is I've noticed it in myself. I'm not exempt. I'm just like all of you, just like you. And if I see too much of it, or I keep getting all these repeats, kind of like the mainstream media right now and a lot of our alternative news. I don't know how many videos had almost identical titles. Zimmer, Zimmerman and Trayvon. And uh, I had to laugh because I tried to warn everybody. I told everybody that this was by design part of the war on race. See, I had a dream, and in the dream there was a parade, and on one side of the street were black people, and on the other side of the street were the white people, and the parade went down through the middle, and the American flag was flying. And there was a lot more to the dream. I won't go into details because I don't want to speak it into existence at all. But that's what we're seeing. We're seeing how this one case 
created so much horrible, horrible negativity. And it's turning into a race war. I witnessed this, you know, in the 60s and early 70s. And of course, we all know about the slavery and all the things that happened prior to the 60s. But you would think that we had evolved past it. I mean, how many white children have been killed, maimed, or raped by a dark-skinned person? How many dark-skinned people have been maimed, raped, or killed by their own color? How many white people have been killed, maimed, or hurt by their own or killed by their own color. How about the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russians, the Germans? This isn't a race thing. It's not at all. It's a dark and evil thing that can affect the weakest of minds. So to see it being used that way is absolutely so sad so sad. However, I can't change anything. I'm just one person. And uh, perhaps my words are not really that valuable to anybody out here. But it's a sharing of the heart. It's sharing from one sister to all her brothers and sisters throughout the world. And that's the way I see it. I see us all as family. You know, somebody made a very snide remark about the in, in, um, people not being capable of not seeing color. And that is just bull manure. Absolutely bull manure. We, we certainly can look past any color we can look past the, the superficial if we choose. And it's all choice. This negativity that we're focusing on, I don't know why people can't understand that it's so simple. It is so simple. We need to see good. We need to look for the good. We need to feel the good. We really do. Or we will become depleted of spiritual strength. You cannot live in a cesspool. And believe me, it's being fed every day. It's just going to keep happening until we change the way we see our world and the way we interact in our world. Do you think crying heals, heals you? or makes you healthy? Do you think depression is a healthy thing? Do you think sadness is a healthy thing or illness? No. Does laughter heal? Scientifically proven, it does. Laughter heals. And we're healing beings. We were created and we're not going to go into creation because there's a big dispute on that. People debate it constantly. You know, some people believe we just crawled out, of, out from under a rock and here we are. Other people believe, such as I do, in the universal creator, our God, the great I Am. Yes. But if we are to discuss that, pooh, ooh, well, the cesspool is filled all the time with all the garbage you want. Murders, rapes, <laughs> thievery, liars, uh, corruption, scandals, and the list is so long many, many more things. 
I suggest that we start putting some clean water in. Some laughter, some joy, some hope. Hopeful videos. Videos where we share from our heart. Where we tell everybody how much we really love. How much we love. Even if it's just a person sitting home with their favorite pet. Holding it and loving it. Working in their garden. Birds in the yard. Little creatures big and small. Bees. Love. Hope. I got drained last night of energy. Going up the stairs, I just, well, in fact, I was sitting on the computer and all of a sudden I just thought, I can't, I can't do no more of this. I, I can't listen to any more negativity, any more hopelessness. Oh, we're going to die. Oh, you know, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Our food is poisoned. Our air is poisoned. Our water is poisoned. There's no hope. Oh, my God, there's no hope. I couldn't listen to any more of it. At all. No matter what happens, no matter what it is, to spend our waking hours, our valuable time, whatever time is left, whether it's years, months, days, weeks, whatever, but to spend it on negativity and hopelessness and oppression and foul mouths and slandering each other and race wars is that how how we really want to spend whatever time we have left is it or do we want to work together bringing joy bringing hope feeding that cesspool with clean fresh water with an abundance of it. The more people that catch on to what I'm saying, the cleaner that is going to get. Because we can push the negativity away. We can clean up the water. We're better than a bottle of bleach. We are. We have so many positive, healthy powers. But right now we're weak because we focus on the bad. We need our strength. We need our strength. Too much negativity is poison. It destroys your strength. It will fill you with hopelessness and depression heartache. How many tears have you shed thinking about the end? Or how hopeless have you felt because you couldn't fix the world? You couldn't get rid of the pollution in our air, the radiation, our dying Pacific, and the list goes on and on. Let's clean it up with the one gift that we were given didn't cost us a penny didn't cost us a thing all we have to do is use it and that is the power of love of goodness of compassion of understanding of forgiveness forgiveness you see friends accidents happen. They certainly do. And there were two guys that lived in the same housing development, subdivision, neighborhood, whatever you want to call it. One made a poor choice being in an area at a time of night when he shouldn't have and considering the fact that they'd already had crimes taking place, home burglaries. Another person thinking they're doing their duty by 
being part of Neighborhood Watch. An altercation, one out of concern, suspicion, and fear, the other out of suspicion, fear, and uh, who knows what else. But it ended badly. It ended badly. Now do we dwell on that and hate each other for it? Hate the, the jury because the jury made a decision? That's the way our country works. Don't fall for the deception. Don't fall for the division. We've been divided long enough. It's time for us to unite for the right things. Let's quit dwelling on the negativity, the bad, the, wor the worrisome things. Let's dwell on hope, love, charity, compassion. Let's be conscientious of what our world really needs. Look around you. Does your world, your area, your city, your town, your suburb, your rural area, your home, does it need more negativity? Do you really want to keep bringing it in? Or does it need hope? Does it need help? Does it need love? Does it need light? Light. The gift was given to us. We can make it happen. But you have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you need to figure out why you don't. Put yourself to the test. Bring your spirit up so that you can feed the spirits around you with the same strength, the same good energy. I love you all. Great big hugs. And guys, no fear. No fear at all. Don't be concerned with worldly things. It all ends with good. Yes, good in the end. An end doesn't mean what you think. It's not the closing. It's not the end. It's like my videos. There's no end to them. Trust me, there's not. Even when I click that red button to turn this off, my mind goes on and on. Sometimes I just write with a pen. I love you all. Again, great big hugs. Think about it. We need strength. We certainly do. I need you. Catch you later.